Big shakeups at the top of the tree at Lucasfilm, and we are here to talk about the potential impact of that going forward for Star Wars. So, gonna be a good one here. Welcome everybody to the Resistance broadcast. I'm John, thanks for joining us on this Monday. It is October 24th. We are a week away from Halloween. Uh, it's... Dun, 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 dun. Is that your uh, Halloween so theme song? Uh... <laughs> yeah. My attempt. Um, it's it's a crazy time to be a Star Wars fan. We have uh, Andor firing on all cylinders, but big news drops. Uh, I don't know, at least at the time of recording this, Lucasfilm hasn't commented on it, as far as I understand it, but it comes from Deadline uh, that Michelle Redjwan has, you know, quote unquote, stepped down from the senior VP role at Lucasfilm. She's the second in command right under Kathleen Kennedy. A really big deal. And... Um, with me today is uh, Lacey. James is still on vacation. He will be back with us Wednesday live to talk about Mando. Mando. I'm so excited for Mando. Andor episode eight. <laughs> I know. Let's get back to Mando. I mean uh, Andor episode eight. James will be back Wednesday. Uh, hit him up on Twitter and Instagram at Myra Trunks, of course. Uh, miss you, buddy. See you soon. Um, and I'm sure we're, we want to hear his thoughts on this too. So this is something that's going to go on for a while in terms of discussing it because Lacey, I, I just had the impression you know, at least the first day or so that this has been out, um, I believe that it came out last night. It's so funny that the news comes out from Deadline the, like hours before a new episode of Star Wars comes out. It's like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but it, again, it hasn't been confirmed by Lucasfilm as of recording this. Now that could change, but I, I just was surprised that a lot of people haven't been talking about this and you know how Star Wars fans love talking about Star Wars. So I'm either thinking... Um, people aren't dialed into who a Michelle Regwan is. You know, there are people who are like us who understand it, but maybe some people just see it as a name and they're like, I don't know what that is. That's a business thing, whatever. But we're talking about the person who was in charge of developing the future films, series, and tone and direction of creative for Lucasfilm, specifically, especially Star Wars, gone. Uh, and, but staying on as a producer, so to me, you know, we'll talk more about it later, but, but were you surprised that it didn't get more attention and, and, and buzz and stuff like that? Like I was. Yeah. Because it was such a big announcement when they made it that she got that role. So it's yeah. surprising that one, she's staying with the company in a lesser role and two, that no one else is talking about it. Yeah. So, um, that's going to be our, our main point of discussion today. You know, typically the Monday episodes when we're not doing live shows on Wednesdays, um, our, you know, resistance report, we go through all the news and, and that sort of stuff. But on this one, um, we're going to do some will of the force. And our main discussion is going to be about this one news story because it really is a big deal. And uh, we're going to speculate on what the ramifications could be about her departure. And also, you know, a lot of the stuff, bringing back a lot of the stuff we had heard from people who know people about how she got to where she was and, and you know what the potential impact could be. So it, I think it's going to mm -hmm. be an interesting discussion. So thanks for joining us, first of all. Um, and uh, make sure you know out of the gate, make sure you subscribe to our show, of course, uh, because um, the live shows and, and everything else we have going on. But uh, and and Patreon and all that stuff. But Lacey has a thing she'll get to on that stuff later. But um, Lacey, do you want to do some Will of the Force to to sort of get in the mood, get in the Star Wars vibe? I fear nothing for all this. As the Force wills it. Here's the deal. Will of the Force. Uh, we have three questions. One from Patreon and two that uh, I'm pitching here. And we're going to start with that one. Uh, so the first one here. Will Star Wars ever tell a live action story, movie or series that takes place within the period between A New Hope and Return of the Jedi? Now we've seen comics do it, um, but we have not seen any big weighty live action stuff taking place within uh where those three movies take place so Lacey, do you think that will ever happen do you think they'll uh swing big there absolutely not they will never touch from a new hope to the end of return of the jedi i don't see them ever doing any series or movies or anything that is sacred land so to speak and they're not going to touch the original trilogy i don't think I think they'd have a lot of backlash from fans if they did anything like that. Hmm. 
So even if I position it this way, I like the gaps between the two movies because they did comics, plenty of comics. Comics, I feel like, are different. There's a little bit of um, a separation because it's a different medium. Okay. I, I like the books. You know, they had mm -hmm. so many books during that period and whatnot. Um, I just don't see them doing live action because then you get into Leia, Han, and Luke territory and they'd never, I don't know. I just don't think they're going to touch that. Okay. I I think they will. Wow, really? But I think it'll be, you know, what's going on over here during this. It won't be, uh, let's recast on Luke and Leia and stuff. They'll never do that. But I think mm -hmm. in the few years between the movies, um, I think A New Hope and Empire is like three years. I think Empire and Jedi is one year. I think they may dabble there. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm just going to say they will. But I, I, again, I don't think it's going to be anything that's going to be tied to the legacy characters we know from the original trilogy. Because for the reason you said, they don't want to tamper with that. Right, right. Um, all right, next one. We have a Patreon submission. This came from Hass. What's up, pal? Over there in... I think he's London. I think he's in, over in London, England. He's UK, yeah. Uh, all right, Hass said, will we ever see high-profile Marvel actors switching over to Star Wars in the future? Um, which I feel like we kind of have I feel like already. Someone recently, someone recently said they wanted to make this. Was it Chris Evans? Did he? Someone said that they were really dying to be in Star Wars, and it was definitely someone Marvel-related. Marvel it's interesting. I'm not sure who it was. We, we already have had some. Like, is Paul, I would say Paul Bettany is a high-profile actor. Yep. Yep. Um, Which is Vision, yeah. So, and then Oscar Isaac did the opposite. Yeah. So I wonder if he's saying, like, from this point forward, will more come over? I would say probably. Um. I think that the odds of one of them doing it over zero is probably higher than not. What do you think? Yeah, I could see. I I I see high profile, and I think Avengers. You know, specifically, that's what I think of high tier high, which Vision is a part of the Avengers. But I feel more like, you know, Captain America, Scarlett Johansson. Robert Downey Jr., which now we're hearing Robert Downey Jr. is going to come back, which we all knew as soon as they did that timeline thing that they were like, they're just looking for a way to bring him back. Um, I feel like they're all pretty tied up with the the Marvel stuff, unless it's Chris Evans or obviously Scarlett Johansson. But even then now, they can bring her back. So who really knows, you know? Yeah. Um, I would say yes, because I feel like everybody's going to end up in Star Wars at some point. We have Harrison Ford now going to the MCU, so. Yeah, that's true. And it's I, where the money is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Um, I mean, Favreau technically counts too, right? He does. Yeah. I mean, so I, I think there'll, there'll be more in the future. I didn't know that about, they're bringing Iron Man back? That's the rumor with Secret Wars is they're bringing him back or Disney's trying to get him back. You know, because of the whole timeline thing with Loki, it's now undone everything. And I already didn't like Endgame. Wanda, multiverse type of stuff. And now his ending is going to feel so flat if they bring him back. I hated his ending, so I'm okay with it. I love the ending. I stand with Jon Favreau of not killing him. Yeah, I, I, I like the ending. I've never seen my true feelings and emotions replic replicated like this where i'm often the one that's like you don't need to kill characters to have a good ending but for some reason hollywood doesn't think that they're like no we need to kill everyone yeah he's getting old though too no offense to him but like are we gonna have just this like really old tony stark is that what's going on i don't care he could be his tony stark as long as he wants to oh you want him back yeah i do love robert downey jr so uh, that's interesting. Um, all right, back to Star Wars. Uh, Hass, let us know what your answer is, buddy. All right, mm -hmm. uh, last one here in Will of the Force. Will there be a new president of Lucasfilm when the next Star Wars movie opens in theaters, Lacey? When is Kathleen Kennedy's contract up? Three years? So what would that be? Um, when did is she... that 2025? When did she re-up? She re-upped last year, 2021. So that's 2024. Through through 2024, the next movie is scheduled for December 2025. Will she I'm have a new yes. contract? 
Oh, okay. I don't think so. I think she. this is it. This is it. So you think it's stay through for indie and post-indie, close that out, and then post indie and get Mando on its way. Hand it over and get Filoni into the place that he needs to be in. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I I think so too. Um, Kathleen Kennedy, you know, I'm not trying to be an ageist here, but Kathleen Kennedy is going to be 70. George Lucas sold it when he was. I think it's more 68. going into yeah. Go back to focusing on your passion projects. Her husband's doing different movies and stuff. Like she doesn't have to stop doing movies, but maybe she just stops being the president of a company. I, and also, I would imagine she's probably getting tired of dealing with all of this. It's a lot. She's done it for 10 years. It's a, it's a long time. By the time she's done, I think she's be... just trying to set things. I think she's pulling a Bob Iger, you know? She's trying to set things up to succeed, and mm-hmm. then she's going to fade out. <laughs> I do miss Bob Iger. Something about that man was just very charming and, and inviting. I know he was a billionaire businessman, but I liked him People better. People really than, liked him. I like him better than this guy. <laughs> Old Bob Paycheck? Yeah. I still, they I still wish I said hi to Iger, but it was very intimidating. He had big security guards. He was guards. right there. Ooh. I looked at you. There was a split second where I looked at you and I said, here's your moment. And then it felt like everything slowed down, like in the movies. Yeah, it did. Like everything I'll never forget slowed. Yeah. And I was just like, is <laughs> she going to say something? And then Matt Martin was and like, you should have said it. I'm like, thanks. thanks. He was, but to your defense, though, he was flanked by two huge security guards. And I think he was, it was close to the end of the waiting. Like it, it was almost time to go to the movie. People were going in. Yeah. He had to go make a speech. Imagine I'm like, yeah. hey, he Bob, was going into it. Makes it all too happen. He's like, get this guy out of here. Imagine if he did that and he punched you like Indiana Jones punches people out. That would like have been Harrison the Ford greatest style, thing like that ever happened in my life. Han Solo punch in Force Awakens. Yeah. Do you realize how rich I would be? Are you kidding me? Bob Iger punches you? I would laugh so hard, though. That would be pretty hilarious. I would laugh Because you the know way, someone would get it on film. All the way the, to the dentist, and then from there, all the way to the bank. You know that guy has a good punch. Yeah. Imagine I knocked out Bob Iger. <laughs> Why would you do that? If he punched me, I'm punching But back. I'm saying he might have thought you were a security threat. That's different. Yeah. Like, imagine being in that kind of position. I'm sure you're just nervous. I'm nervous all the time as a normal human being. Yeah. So, like, imagine you're in a position like that. Even with security guards, you have to be on alert that, like, there are people out there that just don't like you that are willing to hurt you. You know, you're not wrong. Um. All right. Yeah. Here's the deal. That was good. A nice round of Will of the Force. Um, mm-hmm. cur- curious where James would have landed on those. We'll have to hit him up. After. It would be the opposite of whatever we said. Right, James? <laughs> I do think he... Let's. I'm gonna do a guess real quick on what James would say. Will there be a live action? Th- he he would he agree with you and say no. He'd say no. Yeah. Uh, what, what do you think he would say about a more high profile Marvel coming to Star Wars? Yes. Is yeah, how he'd I would. Say it. Yeah, I think he would agree with me on that one. And will there be a new president of Lucasfilm? I think he would say yes. He would say, "I hope so." Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what are you James, doing, James? is so funny in that he has a very specific opinion about things that I often know and you know too John just cuz we talk so often what he's going to say and then the whole president of Lucasfilm direction of the movie studio stuff that he's been talking about all the past it's like a different side of James that I've gotten to know and it's been a very kind of frustrated like what is going on from James, which is very weird because I feel like a couple of years ago we wouldn't have gotten this from him. Yeah. But I'm enjoying it. <clears throat> his cam- his camera is usually this that... way, right? Well, to us, he's usually looking at the camera. But yeah, he'd be like, What are you doing? <laughs> anyway. All right. Smash that like button. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. It's yeah. time for our next segment of the podcast. All right, guys, it's time for the Patreon pod race. So there are lots of ways that you can support us here on the podcast. You can like this video, comment, subscribe on YouTube. I just made that joke, but I'm serious. Um, you can also follow us on any of the audio apps, uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, etc. Please leave us a review on those. They really help us out. Let us know how we're doing and just help us grow as an audience as a community because people see the show and it gets ranked and stuff like that so we really appreciate it um 
On top of that, you can follow us on social. Our new Twitter handle is at TRB Podcasts. I'll say that again, at TRB Podcasts. If you want to follow us on Instagram, we're at the resistance, or at resist, no, we're all three, I think, at the resistance broadcast. And then we're also on Facebook. And maybe, maybe TikTok. We've had people request to be on TikTok. Well, I we're think we out. like have to at this point. <laughs> we have had requests, so we're we're figuring it out. But anyway, uh, please support us on all those channels. We really appreciate it. But if you want to support us even more than that, if you want to be a part of the resistance and say, "Hey, I like what you're doing here. I want to see you guys succeed," you can head over to Patreon.com/slash/resistancebroadcast. Starting at just five dollars a month, that's it. You get to be a part of the show by answering stuff like Will of the Force. We take your questions earlier. You get to rank uh, upcoming episodes of the live action shows like Andor and Mando. I almost thought I said Andor wrong because I heard Mando in my head. That's what happened to me before. Oh my gosh, Mando, Bugga Bob Fett, Obi Wan Kenobi, Acolyte, Ahsoka, any of those shows. We do live shows where we talk about them um and just lots of other benefits discord and much more this is the part of the show that we let our generals and spice runners take part so we ask them a question they give us their answer and we talk about it so before i get to that point i want to thank those people so thank you to our generals carmelo john Reese, jed rosewater frank grande darth hurricane nick kratz christian morales brian smith matt chitty danny mike Ramori, matt heath Chris White, Brendan McLaughlin, Count Pepto, Sam Zilke, Sneaky Zebra, Paul Sullivan, who is new to the resistance. Thank you, Paul. And Val Trichkoff. And then we have our Spice Runners, David Probus, Neil Shaw, Kendall Gellner, Ryan Warr, Dave Hornack, Thomas Hennessy, Andrew, St- Andrew Staley, Jeremy Myers, and Michael Fry. Almost made it through. Thank you guys so much. Um, honestly, what happened is halfway through the Spice Runners, I remembered that someone on our live show was asking if we were going to Celebration in London. And I was like, oh, I didn't answer his question. And that's what happened when I was reading those names. We are going to celebration. I got <laughs> Just want to throw I that gotta, out there. I, did you end up submitting your passport renewal thing? Not yet. Oh, yeah, I got to do that soon. I got to see where it, I, I sent you the link, so I got to grab that link again. Anyway. Okay, so now everybody knows we really need to redo our passport. Who cares? What is, that, what is that revealing? What's the big deal? <laughs> anyway, anyway, but yes, we will be at celebration. But this week we have our buddy, Jeremy Myers. What's up, Jeremy? We miss you. We got to hang out with you at Celebration in Anaheim. It was a blast. Um, And his question was, we are halfway through Andor season one. What are you hoping we see slash see happen in the second half of the season? Jeremy, take it away. Hey, what's going on, everybody? So I'm most uh, excited to uh, see if they hopefully dive deeper into the network, um, kind of the people pulling the strings and uh, making decisions as to what targets they're going to hit and why they do it. Um, getting to see Saw Guerrera is going to be uh, something we look forward to, uh, seeing Andor expand his uh, need to take the uh, Empire down. Um, you know, I think, to, you know, Mon Mothma getting uh, uh, getting more involved and in showing her uh, depth um, in the you know into the rebellion. Uh, those are all things that I want to see. Um, so far, I've been super impressed with the series, and I think they're the quality of the uh, the filming is absolutely amazing, and the storylines have been you know unreal to this moment so hope you're all well and uh looking forward to the future jeremy out nice job jeremy it's always awesome to see your face and hear from you uh you're such an awesome member of the resistance john what did you think i liked your answer specifically the part about talking about the network um because we've heard about it a couple times now and i feel like it's one of those things where we're like outside of a club waiting to get in or something. And we, <laughs> the door opens every once in a while and we hear like something cool and we look in and we see some cool stuff, but we can't get in yet. We're on the surface out here. We got Luthen and Mon Mothma, but there's something way deeper and there's the, the Saw Gerrera stuff. And you know, where are they hiding out? And like, I, I want to get into the rebellion party. And I, I agree with you. I want to see that. I want to get involved there and, really get into like the core 
of these like rebellion fighters who are doing these things that are being set up and funded by Mothman and, and Luthen. So I hope we get that too. Um, so I thought you did a, a great job. Great answer. I think you might, were you, I don't know if you were in the office or something, but it's funny. Cause like sometimes James, when he's in the office and he does videos, he has to like, he talks very like quiet, but he doesn't want to sound <laughs> like it's quiet. So he, he elevates his voice a little bit, but it's still low. It sounded like you were like doing that a little bit. So were you in the office? And if so, you're a rebel yourself, Jeremy. So thank you for all your support as always, man. Um, uh, Miss those bear hugs. One of the best hugs of celebration. Jeremy Myers. Great hugger. Uh, and are you going to... Is he going to celebration? Has Jeremy said? I think he... I, I'm not sure. But either way. I'm not sure. You're the man. Thanks, buddy. And talk soon. Yeah, Jeremy, you're, you're wonderful. I hope uh, you and your family, family are doing well. Um, I loved your answer. I <clears throat> This show has just surprised me in so many ways. I think Mon Mothma is at another level of my fandom now like i i adore everything about her character from so the good. show and getting to know her um i am also super impressed with the quality of this show i think the cinematography for andor has been top tier and it's been some of the most stunning shots that we've seen in star wars and locations and i think it's shown and i've said this on the live shows that the volume is wonderful and in the way people have used it so far has been you know life-changing and changing for the industry but there's just something different about being in the hills in scotland that are just never going to compare to being in the volume but um yeah we hope to see you soon thank you so much for supporting us we love hearing from you uh hopefully it's sooner rather than later to see you um and that being said we're gonna go back to john all right, sort of a hybrid of resistance reports last discussion. So whatever graphic James chose. <laughs> Obi-Wan once thought as you do. There it is. Um, but really, it's one topic, Lacey. It's, it's enough for us to spend the rest of the show on it. And probably then some. Yes, when it James is. James gets back. Um, but we talked about it at the top. Michelle Regwan, you know, steps down as a senior VP at Lucasfilm, uh, but returns to being a producer, but still within the company, including Walt Disney Studios and Lucasfilm while operating still out of the Lucasfilm offices. So long story short, a demotion, so to speak, um, unless you want to buy that she said, I want a lower job. I don't buy that. Um, but that's the story. And, you know, Michelle Regwan, not a household name if you're a casual Star Wars fan or even a diehard Star Wars fan who doesn't pay attention to the executive stuff at Lucasfilm. Because um, people always say, Kathleen Kennedy, Kathleen Kennedy, Kathleen Kennedy. Um, this is your now former head of live action development. Uh, that includes the series, that includes the movies. Um, and she took on the job in 2019. So you'd have to really look at like, you know, what is her stamp on um, as a, as that role, you know, existed. Um, but Lacey, your, your initial thoughts when you saw this news, did you see it as a good thing? Did you see it as a bummer? Um, and what, what's your take on it? Do you think it was a, a step down or you think that was a nice PR thing to do? Like what's your overall take on this stuff? Yeah, it's, it's weird news in the sense of when they first announced this role, it was like a big announcement from them that she was taking it on. It was like the picture of her with the X-Wing and everything. Yeah, yeah. And then now it seems like they're trying to announce this so they're being transparent, but it's kind of on the quieter side. Um, everyone knows my thoughts on her in the sense of, I'm sure she's a nice person. I'm, I, her quote about Ben Solo rubbed me the wrong way in the the documentary for the rise of skywalker because it just felt like not just that she said that the death of ben solo was hopeful it just seemed like she had a bigger role in the rise of skywalker and since i had some issues with that movie i couldn't help but be like okay well is it because studio people are getting too involved in these movies you know and piecemealing the story together instead of letting people have their vision like a ryan johnson who did everything you know he he wrote it and directed it it was his 
vision. Whereas I feel like Rise of Skywalker was like all these kind of cooks which, in the kitchen, I guess. She was which not we've a heard producer for The Last Jedi. Rise, right. The Last Jedi, she was not involved and she came on for The Rise of Skywalker. So it's kind of when you're looking at it from the outsider of Lucasfilm looking in and you see that this person wasn't there and everything went pretty well. Maybe a reception wasn't what they wanted, but the actual production of the movie went well. And then she shows up and then it wasn't that great and everything was kind of thrown together and there was a lot of last minute changes and whatnot. It, it just seems like from that moment to now, the only thing that's gone really well has been Mando. And I feel like Mando went well because it was Fabro, not because other people necessarily were involved. But it's weird to me that, again, she's stepping down because normally when you step down like this, you don't usually stay at the company. It's usually like, hey, I'm going to go somewhere else. But she did sign a deal with them to do Lucasfilm and Disney movies. So I don't know if it's maybe it is an opportunity where she's like, look, I just want to go back to producing. Yeah, it's possible. And like the the story of Michelle Redwan's path with which, by the way, I, w- I do wish James was here because now I'm thinking of that he met her at the Rise of Skywalker he uh, he glo- interviewed global her press conference. Table. Yeah, he was a part of the roundtable and he got to talk to her about Solo and and how she, I guess, texted or called John Kasdan. She took a picture of his sweatshirt. Yeah, and called and texted John Kasdan to tell him about it. And she's good friends with John Kasdan, who's still involved. Uh, he's doing the Willow and series. And she did right the now. Willow series. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But. Her her journey to Lucasfilm is, <clears throat> you know, pretty ma- mapped out pretty clearly. And, you know, we've talked to people who spoke with people inside Lucasfilm and, and who know people there um, who understand the politics of this stuff. And basically how it, I, how it worked out was she was a bad robot. She was working there. Uh, and I think initially as an assistant to J.J. Abrams, um, became a producer there. I think her first movie was Star Trek. First or second she one? She co-produced 2015's The Force Awakens. I'm not there yet. Oh. Bad Robot. So she did the first or second Star Trek. Uh, she was like mm-hmm. a, a co-associate producer. Then Super 8. And then JJ gets Force Awakens. And she, yeah, was a co-associate producer of that. That gets her into Lucasfilm. She... Uh, Ryan Johnson takes uh, episode eight. Ram Bergman's his guy. Um, so she's off that one. And then mm-hmm. for Rise of Skywalker, JJ comes back. Bad Robot comes back. Uh, Michelle Redwan gets the role as uh, senior VP and in addition to a producer, an executive producer for Rise of Skywalker. And the story is, and I know we've talked about this on the podcast, that Kathleen Kennedy... Or, or Ryan Johnson was on his way to the set of Solo to accept and sign the contract for Episode Nine, And this is before The Last Jedi had come out. So people mm-hmm. were still high on Ryan Johnson because of his other movies. And because of, you know, the hype from Orlando celebration with that iconic poster. And everyone was like still off the high off of Rogue One and Force Awakens. Star Wars fandom was good. Again... Pre TLJ, post TLJ fan number two different things. He's mm-hmm. flying over to accept the role, and Michelle Rejwan, uh, from what we understand, convinced Kathleen Kennedy to give it to JJ because she JJ's her guy, and it's uh, a big uh, advantage for her to do that. So they give JJ nine. They pivot and give Ryan Johnson his own trilogy instead. Almost like a, we think Make good. this is better. You get three of your own movies or whatever. So Michelle Rajwan, uh is elevated, you know, obviously to uh, uh, two years, a year and a half later, becomes senior vice president of live action and development for Lucasfilm. And that's sort of how that went down from, from what we understand. And, and, you know, we've talked to a couple of people about this and that all that really makes a lot of sense. And. And it was I've a heard, power play, basically. And from everything that I've heard, and, and you know, with James having met her and other people, she she does seem like a very nice person. So I'm not. This has nothing to do with her as you know an individual. Just the business side of of movies. Like she had an opportunity, and she Kathleen Kennedy liked it, and that's what they did. Um, 
Now, moving forward from the announcement of 2019 of her getting the role, I look at the projects that have come out or that are in the pipeline now, and I got to like cross off certain things because, you know, the Obi-Wan Kenobi thing was already something that was in development. Mm -hmm. So we, and we know that that was, you know, the whole story about it, a movie, and then it became a series. Um, Andor was announced the year prior, and that was pretty fleshed out. Bob Iger revealed that series. And the story of that was ironed out. Gilroy hadn't been in yet. Um, but so when I look at it, I'm thinking things that she developed has to be and, and Ahsoka, I figure is just that's that's Favreau and Filoni. Mm -hmm. So then I'm thinking Acolyte and Skeleton Crew are like the two. And then you have the ones that haven't happened yet. Some are canceled. So Rangers of the New Republic, um, Lando, we're not sure about yet. And then the movie stuff. So Rogue Squadron, absolutely, under her. Um, Taika Waititi's movie. And then whatever. She's staying on to still produce his movie. Yeah, yeah. So, so it is interesting that she's staying on as a producer. So it's not anything that's like she did anything egregious and, and got completely cut out. She's staying and still operating out of the Lucasfilm offices. There's a chance maybe she did step down, like you say, Lacey. I don't buy that. I, I think that was just a nice way to treat somebody who was a good employee at the, at the studio. Is this Because you never want to say Michelle Regewan fired uh, from you know, Lucasfilm or demoted. It may even sound worse because it just mm -hmm. sounds like... You, you put your tail between your legs or whatever. So her announcement of her getting this SVP role was June 17th in 2019. Yep. And K Kathleen Kennedy put out this big announcement over it and said that she'll oversee a new slate of feature films and episodic series for Lucasfilm and Disney Plus to continue to produce with Kennedy as Star Wars franchises built out. Mm -hmm. Now, if you go by that sentence... Do you think she has succeeded in building out a new slate of fe feature films and episodic series for Lucasfilm and Disney Plus? That's that's the thing. No, um, I don't. And you know the everything falls on Kathleen Kennedy, of course, um, because ultimately she's the studio president and she's the one who brought Michelle Regwan into that role. Maybe mm -hmm. Michelle Regwan wasn't ready for that type of role yet, and she power played herself there. And that's what a lot of people do in their careers, you know. Not fake it till you make it, but aim high and, and make things work for yourself. I mean, look at Kathleen Kennedy. She started off as, as an assistant to Steven Spielberg and then became one of, if not the greatest producers of all time. Mm -hmm. it just mm -hmm. it, people who believe in themselves can do great things. And I think mm -hmm. Michelle Regwan is of that ilk. There's, certain amount, there's only certain people that can get to that type of level. You have to have that sort of drive. And that sort of belief in yourself. And she absolutely has that. So all credit to her. I just think it's clear things have not been working out. Um, now, I'm not saying the stuff she has developed aren't going to be good. I'm excited to see what Skeleton Crew is all about. I'm excited to see Acolyte. Um, but beyond that, that's really it. Because the, like I said, the other stuff, which she may have done producing work on, uh, isn't a part of the role of developing new projects. And coming up the with big, new projects and stuff. So Yeah, the key phrase here to me that sticks out in this announcement is continue to produce with Kennedy as the Star Wars franchise is built out. And, and that's when she got the job? Yep. And the okay. quote that Kathleen gave was, quote, working with Michelle over the last seven years as a producer on both The Force Awakens and now The Rise of Skywalker, I have seen firsthand her skills collaborating with writers and directors and I've been incredibly impressed with her creative skills and her ability to manage the complexity surrounding these massive projects, said Kennedy. I know the importance of building a team that you trust and have fun working with. It is paramount to our success. There's an exciting momentum building for the, for the future of the franchise, and both myself and the Lucasfilm team look forward to working with Michelle in shaping the future in all areas of story development from theatrical film development to live action content for Disney+. Plus. See, that's so interesting, isn't it? Because 
I mean, that's a bold statement to say that like, hey, she's one of the key people that are building out this plan for what's to come for Star Wars. And if you look at where it's at now in 2022 Man. from this announcement in 2019, you can't say that it's been 100% a perfect. Right. And and people need to remember. Perfect plan. Like reiterating. The Mando was literally lightning in a bottle. Like they did not expect Mando to be what it was. But again, Mando was already is. in development before she got that job. Yes. So and and Obi Wan already in development when she got that job, um, Book yes. of Boba Fett was a Favreau thing. He said, "I want to do it," and Kathleen Kennedy's like, "Okay." He's like, "I want Robert Rodriguez to do it." Okay, so I I don't see this that as her developing that. Um, so if you look up her name on Deadline, I'm pretty sure. Yep, the only thing that is 2019 her announcement of getting this role, and 2022 her announcement of stepping down from this role. Yeah, and again, at the time of recording this, uh, Lucasfilm hasn't confirmed this, um, but this is one of those things where if it was wrong, Deadline would have been reached out to by the head of PR at Lucasfilm, and the story would have been taken down. So it's legit. And again, you know, we haven't seen the projects that she's developed at this point, and ones that she has, some of them had been canceled. You know, Range of the New Republic. I know that's an issue with, Gina Carano, because they were they wanted her to be a big part of that. Which also, I think that's that in itself is kind of crazy, because I never thought Gina Carano was that good of an actor, and I I had a hard time saying that stuff when people liked her, but now that people hate her, they're like, oh yeah, she was terrible anyway. It's like, well, you weren't saying that when you know season mm-hmm. one of Mandalorian came out, and you wanted her to win an Emmy, so people like to you know say whatever's popular at the time. Um, so. Here's a step further now. Oh, boy. If you go to Lucasfilm's website on the leadership team, Mm -hmm. Michelle is still listed as the senior vice president live action development and production as of time of recording. But even more interesting is the description of what her job is. It's old. So hold on. It says that she oversees all theatrical and live direct to consumer live action content and, quote, is responsible for identifying and delivering future projects for Lucasfilm. Yeah, but... So if you're giving someone a statement like that, that they're responsible for identifying and delivering future projects, it's not looking too good right now. No, and and you know what's funny, though, about that? Look at the second paragraph. This well, is... I'm seeing the shapes and implements creative strategy for Lucasfilm. But do you see she's, this? this yeah, hasn't, she's currently producing. This Rise hasn't of been Skywalker. updated for three years. Yeah. 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 So, oof. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to make an argument that she's delivered on that job description. Um, especially with, I wonder if the Rogue Squadron cancellation was the nail in the coffin. I mean, is it just that, or is it also Ryan Johnson? Is it also all these other things? I, you it can't, claims but, that she's still producing Taika. You the other day said that you didn't think Taika was happening anymore. I don't know. And that's just me. I'm not, I didn't hear anything about that. But, uh, you know, I really try to connect all these dots. And that's why I hate, like, tweeting about this stuff. Because trying to tweet all these nuanced stories and trying to p- connect them together in this big jigsaw puzzle in 280 characters, it's just, it's a headache. And then people just take right. it the wrong way and stuff. But, again, that Bresnikan interview with Kathleen Kennedy right before Celebration this year where she goes, I don't want just uh, someone showing up doing one movie and bouncing. That's exactly what Taika's thing is, as far as I understand it. So I think they're still looking for the person to be the the, the Feige of the movies. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's not an executive. That's like, you know, I mean, it is, but it's not, it wouldn't have, it, it's not what Michelle's job was. So like they want someone to be the creative drive of that. Um, mm-hmm. And it's just clear to me that there's been so many cancellations and misfires and the Ryan Johnson trilogy is not her fault. Like Kathleen Kennedy gave that to Ryan as a consolation for saying he was going to get nine and then he didn't. Um, And so we have to look, she got the job in the summer of 2019 new projects after that point are what you put on her watch. So not anything that came out after that was already in development before her. She, her job is to right. create new things and expand the universe and, and, you know, continue certain threads and stuff. So anything from summer of 2019 that was created after that point. Um, I just want to make that clear because people are going to say like, well, Obi-Wan just came out. 
It's like, no, that was already in development. You know, Mando was all Favreau and that was already in development. It's just, you, you, you just got to make sure you know when things fall between production and, and, and development. And even I'm still tr- like learning all that stuff. Um, so it really comes down to a couple of cancel- canceled shows, a couple of shows we haven't seen yet. The, and, and I think it's too late in the game that they would cancel those shows. So, because Skeleton Crew is already filmed, I believe. And Acolyte's supposed to start filming like in a couple of weeks, I think, in, in England. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. I hope those are great shows and she may have done a great job putting those together but like you said the body of work overall isn't there right you can't you can't look at what they say she's responsible for and say that she's succeeded yeah I mean Um, seeing a Star Wars movie obviously there's a lot of variables that go into that there's budgets there's scheduling there's you know all this different stuff but if the announcement was made that she's the person to lead this franchise into the next era of what Star Wars is going to be and that she's so great at overseeing creative strategy and like getting the perfect team together and all this other stuff. Look at Rogue Squadron. <laughs> like, yeah, it's hard to look at the, an announcement like that recently where it's like, hey, that's indefinitely off the schedule. Like, that's not happening anymore. And it's really tough as a Star Wars fan to come to terms with the fact that they're struggling to come up with ideas for new movies. And that's, that's what her job was. Yeah. And like, again, s- seven months ago, six months ago, Kathleen Kennedy saying like, you know, we need someone to come in here and, and be the person for 10 to 15 years and stuff. I guess, you know, <laughs> they haven't found that person. It's just, it seems like they're at a position right now with the movies where they're like, we used the sequel trilogy as our crutch for a very long time. And we figured by this point we would have the ideas for the future. And they thought they did with this Rogue Squadron, Taika, blah, blah, blah. I don't think... How about the Game of Thrones guys? I know. And that was, again, predated her too. But you're right. They, They pieced out and they got their Netflix deal. And it's just... I think people are very hesitant to come work in Star Wars because they see how fans are. Um, They see how these, you know, Kathleen Kennedy likes uh, gets a little combative sometimes with with story ideas and and that sort of thing. I mean, look at just Natalie Holt was talking to us about how she was micromanaged on Leia's theme, just the right all the way down to those little things. Um, um how about what was it it was recently chris miller said something on twitter what was the comment he had made oh it was when the kathleen kennedy uh article came out oh uh, what he said that he said something it was very kind of vague but it was like perfectly timed that was um along the lines of like about how they got fired no it was something along the lines like i'll never forget working with certain people hmm. uh what was it oh he made some comment about like I'll never f- like not everyone's nice it, it, and it was clearly like a jab you know what I mean yeah if you find it um, read it I like, find but it. yeah I forget what it was and I don't want to speculate too much on like people's personalities and that sort of thing because Kathleen Kennedy seems like a really nice person and she obviously cares a lot and but I, I've been saying this for a while, like you sh- just because she might not be a good executive or president of a movie studio doesn't discredit her legacy. Because again, go down the list of movies she's produced. She is like next to Feige in terms of dollars, the most successful of all time. Mm-hmm. And it's just like all the classic movies that all these people who hate her love, she produced. So when when these jerks have to go down memory lane and pop on all these movies they love they have to see her name on the, in the credit and these these same guys right. who decide which star wars to like and they're like mando's my real star wars well guess who's the president of that studio kathleen kennedy so this isn't like when we have these discussions they're very tough because we are being critical but at the same time we're also giving credit where it's due but the case with michelle Rejvon, uh i think maybe 
she just wasn't ready for that gig yet and it just seems like you have to, we just have to go by the facts and what we have and what we have is canceled projects not a ton in development and the movies are really at a standstill i you know if the taika movie happens cool i just have this feeling that they're 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 wiping that board out and saying like we got to start over you know rogue squadron right. like why why send taika out there to make a one off star wars movie that'll be some zany wacky thing when people were mixed on love and thunder um the, the, you know i i just it, that just doesn't make sense to me and then the feige movie like his writer michael waldron just took another gig for for marvel or something to do something else i think taika just took another gig doing something a tv show or something i just have a feeling they're they're clean slating it the question i have is if michelle redwan's gone and kathleen kennedy's contract is up in two years Mm-hmm. she's you know going to be 70 this next year if they're re- if they're really going to think about clean slate restarting star wars movies fresh and like i think they should maybe go back to trilogies and stuff like that because i don't know if one offs are, are the right idea but wouldn't it make the most sense for disney to say like you know kathy you did such a good job heralding this and and for the, for the last 10 years maybe it's time we go in another direction because why would you I just, I just don't like the idea of if they if they start fresh with the movies and do a whole new set of movies. Say they had like we're doing going Old Republic and we have five movies. It's gonna be like Lord of the Rings and Star Wars. Why would you have her on and then go through a transition while that's happening? That just seems like that'd be a disaster. So, right? Maybe it's maybe they're waiting for for the Indiana Jones stuff and then uh, her contract to end. And if she decides to walk away, then start with the new president for new movies and i don't mind waiting for the movies if they're going to take that smart approach to it because we have the live action shows it's just i, I don't know what do you think do, do you think that's a good idea or do you think she should stay as long as she wants like what, what's your take on that i i just think they need someone new and fresh and that's not that she's done anything wrong i just I think they just need to go in a new direction. Yeah. And for the sequel trilogy, despite what people like or dislike about it, The Last Jedi was new and fresh because they got someone in that had completely different ideas. And I agree. Yeah. yeah. Had a different perspective. Yeah. And I think that is kind of what's missing right now from Lucasfilm. It's like they brought in Favreau, who had a new new thought process wanted to bring do something different than what they were already doing and then it's a hit so then they've fallen into the okay let's just recreate that over and over and over again and tony gilroy came in and goes okay i'll make a series but i want to do all this other stuff i don't want to do the volume and they said okay now it's great because it's different i think they're trying too much to fall into like a cookie cutter like how do we make the marvel kind of uh, yeah it's like they're leading of, from behind let's, yeah let's just keep making the same movies over and over and over again or like the same formula and the reason that the original star wars were so good is because and continue to be is because they were just so different and i feel like we star wars has gone from leading the pack and new ideas and different things and technology and all this other stuff to kind of falling behind everybody else of like what other shows and stuff are on TV and movies that are so different and out there that you're like, this is so good. Yep. Or like Top Gun Maverick is not what anybody expected and it's so awesome. And they did mm-hmm. things that have never been done before. <coughs> I, f- I just feel like they've gotten too comfortable in that it's just Star Wars. And that's not... I understand why it's gotten that way because... You know, there's people like us that will see whatever they put out because that's who we are. We're Star Wars fans. Mm-hmm. But I think the Force Awaken kind of, well, the Force Awaken set a bar of like success, and they just felt like, oh, whatever we put out, it's just going to be successful. And they're surprised when it's not. Yeah, I mean that's and fair. not and- obviously everything they do is somewhat successful. I'm saying in the sense of gangbusters like the Force Awakens well, and, or yeah, Rogue One. And don't forget, you know. If the optics of it, you know, The Force Awakens comes out, becomes the highest grossing movie in North American history. 
uh, one of the top movies in world history. And J.J. Abrams is, you know, he brought Star Wars back. He's the king. Everyone loves J.J. Abrams in 2015. And he is the head of Bad Robot. And Michelle rejwan has been with him for seven years. And then Last Jedi comes out and it's very divisive and splits the fandom. And J.J.'s like, they're like, J.J., come back and do nine. And he, he gets back in and everyone was like, J.J.'s back. Remember, everyone was so excited J.J. Abrams was coming back. Mm-hmm. And, I was pumped. And then in that time, he says, he vouches for Michelle Regemont and says, Michelle's been with me. I think she's a great pick, whatever. Of course, Kathleen Kennedy's mm-hmm. going to be like, J.J. Abrams is saying this. When J.J. Abrams is like white hot, everyone loves him. Uh, sounds good. Sounds really good. Mm-hmm. But I don't think it's worked out. And clearly they made it they made a change and and I don't know if that's Kathleen Kennedy who made the change or if it was came from higher above, maybe it was Disney saying like, You're supposed to be producing this stuff for us and where is it? It could be that cutthroat. Maybe Bob Chappick is more cutthroat. And he's like, What are you doing down there? Why am I hearing that this project is canceled? You know? And right. and you gotta understand it's a business. You gotta understand that aspect of it. This isn't like uh, you know, you you don't you just hate on that person and stuff. No, it's just the facts are there. They had these canceled projects. We still have no idea what's going on with the Lando series. It was very awkward seeing Donald Glover on like Kimmel and being like, not even sure what to say. I think and they and Kathleen Kennedy said there she's waiting on his availability. Like again, like how do you? How do you announce a series with a brand new logo and everything and not be sure that you have your actor locked up? Mm -hmm. It's just strange to me. It's like they're doing there. It's like they're announcing things first and figuring them out later. And we know that, you know, that's one example. The Taika movie, he's saying he's still working on the story. Shouldn't you already have the story that they said, yes, you're going to make a Star Wars movie because of this? It just seems backwards. Mm-hmm. That's not development. That's reverse development. That's saying, um, here's this. I got Taika. I had dinner with Taika. He wants to make a Star Wars movie. They're like, all right, good. And she's like, all right, I, I'm, I'm creating new movies. I'm on my way. And then they're like, oh, he doesn't have a story yet? Oh, boy. Mm-hmm. And it just seems like this stuff keeps happening. And I think that's what led to this. Um, I'm not saying she's not going to be a good producer and do a great job with the future stuff that they're doing. She's still working inside the Lucasfilm office, according to this report, operating out of that. So right, it's not this right. bad blood stuff. But it's a change, and I think it's a good change. I think it's a um, a, a change that is deserving. And uh, we'll see what they do going forward. Maybe they change that role completely um, with a different title. I mean, we saw Dave Filoni got promoted to a creative executive not long ago. I don't know that he's the executive type of that VP ilk, I, I still want him to be on the more hands-on creative aspect of things. But I, I just wonder like what that means for, for Kathleen Kennedy. So I think that's, I think with this now coming out, we find, well, let's find out if Lucasfilm confirms it again, by the time of us recording this, they haven't, but I know from yeah. personal experience, they would contact you and be like, do you can take that down? So um, I do. I I found it. By oh, the way, okay. While I was we were the having a conversation, thing? the Chris Miller thing. So the you know how Kathleen Kennedy did two interviews with the Vanity Fair. She did one on April eighteenth, twenty twenty two, and that's the one where she said that she shouldn't have made ha- uh, Alden Han Solo, all that stuff, and then she came mm-hmm. out in May during Celebration, right before Celebration, and basically said, "No, that's not what I meant." Right. So on April 18th is when the first interview came out and she said all that stuff about Alden. Chris Miller said on April 18th, three o'clock, three fifty that day, quote, I think the most important skill you can have as a filmmaker is the ability to recognize a good idea, even more than having good ideas yourself. Filmmaking is a team sport. And if you surround yourself with talented people and take advantage of all the good ideas, you win. Oof. And to me, now, you can argue, Lacey, he could just be making this random post on a random day. It just seemed too perfectly timed that she was saying how, oh, they should have done a different idea or Han Solo wasn't the idea to have. 
and you have the person that developed the Han Solo movie being like, the best thing you can do is take new ideas. Am I, am I wrong? Am I looking too much no, into this? No, I think it's pretty clear it was because of that. But Because I'm sure he takes offense. I mean, they searched over 3,000 people to find the perfect Han Solo. Mm-hmm. They did all that work on it, and it seems like for him and uh, Phil Lord... When they were at Celebration, they were over the moon excited to do this movie, yeah. to do Solo. Yeah. And now, look, we love Solo, and we love what we got, and we couldn't, you know, it was wonderful. Yeah. But when you look at something like this, and the track record of what's happened with the movies, you can't help but be like, what's going on? Yeah, I know. I know. It's a bummer. Like, again, you know, we... No, I mean, nobody roots for Star Wars harder than we do. I'm not saying we root harder than everybody, but we root as hard as anybody for Star Wars to be good. We want all the movies. We want all the shows. We want as much Star Wars as possible. But I think as, you know, podcasters and stuff and people listen to us, and I'm not saying we're, you know, all that important or anything, but we, you know, you got to be critical because if you just keep saying everything's amazing, then you're going to keep getting this. And this is, you know, putting carts before the horse to drive up buzz. And maybe Disney puts pressure on them to do that around shareholder time, around shareholder meetings and stuff. That's possible. I don't know. how. Mm-hmm. I really don't understand. I wish I understood better or knew from people better the Disney Lucasfilm dichotomy. As I understand it, they let them operate pretty independently. Um, but when stuff like this goes down and you have a big movie that was on the schedule and you see that guy from Fandango who always tweets the Disney movie schedule and the only one removed from it is the Star Wars movie, that is a punch to the gut because Star Wars. I said it last time we talked about the dates, like last week, it hurt, like physically hurt to read that thing and be like wow i'm not getting a star wars movie or we as fans aren't getting one until 2025 star wars was like the first franchise big blockbuster movie and now it's the one that's like struggling the most and i think unfortunately going back to that disney investor day which one day we should go through and read all the announcements no what if we did a rewatch and commentary of the whole thing we could but i think with that kind of setup and in looking at that and being like, oh, my God, they overpromised. Like, they tried too hard to over. And look, we understand things change and, you know, stuff is always in flux. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it just, we can't help to, but compare to, like, Marvel and stuff where they're saying, hey, we're doing these plans four years in advance. And Kevin Feige delivers on those plans. Yeah. Yeah. Just like, it's just kind of like a what's going on <laughs> yeah so but yeah i mean if more info comes out on this we'll 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 uh tackle it next week um without question and you know any other things that trickle down from this but i think for the future of of star wars movies and stuff this is a good thing um because they're recognizing that they need to make changes and making change is sometimes jarring for people and you feel bad for certain people without question. You know, we're all humans. I feel bad for Michelle right. Regwan. She seems like a good person. James said she was so nice and she what she sought him out to say she told John Kazan about his shirt. She seems like an amazing person. Um, but sometimes you got to make changes in order to move things forward. And it looks like that's the move that they have to make. And I think it's the right move. I'm just curious what now else happens because again, a lot of people don't... Michelle Regwan doesn't roll off the tongue as a household name. Second in command at Lucasfilm. This is a big deal, and I'm surprised more people haven't been talking about it to this point of us recording this. But it'll be curious to see what, I think what else comes I people just want this. transparency. They yeah. want to believe yeah. in what's going on and that there's a plan. Is there a shareholders meeting for Disney like this December or anything like that? I don't know. Because they're going to want answers. So we may get information then. Um, Shareholder meeting was in March. The next one seemingly will be December. Hmm. I believe. Okay. Well, um, 
I think we've covered mm-hmm. most of this and, you know, we'll revisit it again in the future. But do you have anything else you want to toss yeah. out there? No, I, I think this is an interesting conversation. I, you know, sadly, I wish James was here because I think he just brings a different perspective. Um, but I think you and I did a good job of kind of walking through our thought process of the initial announcement, how we reacted to it, how things have gone. And now to this point where it seems like no one's talking about this. Like, I, I feel like if this was Dave Filoni, it would be a different discussion. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if Dave Filoni went from being executive, whatever his role is, executive, creative, whatever buzzword, <laughs> to, hey, he's just, you know, a writer again. Everyone would be like, Dave, what? Dave Filoni could take a wrecking ball to Lucasfilm headquarters and he would still have his job. <laughs> like that guy. What if he rode the wrecking ball like Miley Cyrus with a cowboy hat on? Now you have me picturing that, so that's pretty funny. <laughs> and then you know it's just the cowboy hat, of course. <laughs> Maybe some hockey pads on his legs. Oh, boy. Well, I, I think that's a good like way to end it. But I, I agree with you. I, I hope our audience, because this is a tough story to navigate through, um, being critical, not you know being poisonous about it. And I think that is one of our strengths. And I hope that came through here. I, I think it's important right. that at the end of the day, everybody remembers that these are human beings. Yes. And I think 100%. that gets lost a lot on yeah. the internet yeah. of everybody that works on these projects from you know Michelle's level to a writer, visual effects, costume design, actors, etc. All these people are human. So let's it's okay to be critical and ask questions, but it gets to a point that like don't be mean. I uh, exactly. Um mm-hmm. all right. Well, thank you to everybody for listening and watching and being a part of TRB. Uh means a great deal to us. Uh like Lacey said before, subscribe on your preferred platform, rate us. Uh I think did we hit let me check right now. Do we hit three three hundred and fifty ratings on Spotify? That'd be amazing. Um, but or whether it's Apple, they have ratings too. Uh, YouTube, just just subscribe and, and share us with a friend. Word of mouth really does a, a great deal of help for us. Um, and there's a lot of you know podcasts out there. So anyway, you can uh, spread the old word of TRB. We appreciate that very much. And we have we passed 350 ratings on Spotify. Very cool. Thank you to everybody awesome. for doing that. And if you haven't yet, do it quick. Pop it on your phone. Spotify rate five stars. Boom, done. Uh, so thank you. Um, Star Wars News Net for your Star Wars news. Uh, you did the Patreon stuff. That's basically it. Um, again, James will be back with us Wednesday night as we talk about Andor Episode 8, the beginning of that next arc. Uh, but be sure to hit James up on Myra, uh, at Myra Trunks on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, for me, Johnny Hoey on Twitter, uh, writing and editing at Star Wars News Net and my movie podcast, Just Like the Movies. Um, just put out an episode... Uh, well, putting out an episode tomorrow on uh, X Men, so uh, the first X Men. Go check that out. Hugh Jackman was so young when that movie came out; he was like thirty. And now he's doing Deadpool. He's back. Awesome. Yeah. Um, Lacey, where are you at? People can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Lacey Gillerin. All right. Uh, thank you again to everybody, and we hope your week is off to a great start, and your Halloween final preparations are in place because that's in a week. But we'll see you Mm -hmm. on Wednesday for TRB Live with another episode right here on TRB. See you around, kids.